honest to goodness sun right now. Normally we make jokes about like clouds being Seattle sunlight. As long as there's no rain, it's Seattle sunlight. But this is honest to goodness sunlight right here. So let's try that again. How are you guys doing? Yay. Woo! Yeah, that's so much better. <laughs> Welcome aboard. My name's Angelina. I'm uh, I'm indoors, uh, up near the bow of the boat, the front of the boat, um, inside the deck. And I am an actual live person. So if at any point there's something that you want to know more about, feel free to come on up, tap me on the shoulder, ask away, and I'll do my best to answer for you. As Captain Charlie said, we're backing out of our pier here at Pier 55. This is our home since uh, since 1949, actually. A long, long time ago, Captain Lynn Campbell started a water taxi service, not actually a turbo company at the beginning, and, uh, and pointed out uh, things as they were moving along the bay toward the Kitsap Peninsula as people started asking him what things were. Naturally, uh, he decided to kind of turn it into a turbo company. Now, of course, today uh, we don't just have a wonderful, uh, of course, departures out to Tillicum Village and Blake Island, which starts uh, just under a month now, on the, the beginning of March. But we've also got the Royal Argosy has a wonderful Valentine's Day cruise. In case you guys are looking for something to do, I would wholeheartedly recommend that. Uh, Pier 55, and that's just on Elliott Bay. We're on the salt water right now. We've also got departures and, uh, and homes on Lake Union and Lake Kirkland, or at Lake Kirkland, Lake Washington. Now for a second, I do want to point out off of the right-hand side this gigantic ferry before we pass it. This is the Tacoma. It's a 460-foot Jumbo Mark II class ferry. And that's uh, at our home, uh, just south of our home at uh, the Coleman Docks of the ferry. So if we're lucky, we'll get to see another one. Uh, in a short while, this will actually depart. And they generally tend to push around a lot of water because they are very heavy things. They carry lots of uh, over 200 cars and a couple of thousand passengers. And they go a lot faster than we do, so at some point, their wake is gonna make us rock around. So just whenever you're rocking about, just keep an eye on uh, on your footsteps and uh, and where they'll be, and that is more than suffice, and more than to suffice for your, your safety throughout the boat. Now, of course, uh, we're just getting pointed out in, the, in our direction where we'll be heading. And this is the central waterfront of downtown Seattle. You've got our pier uh, just to the north of us, our neighbors, Elliot's inside Pier 56, the yellow and green colored pier, home uh, to a 21 foot long oyster bar that features over 30 different varieties of oyster, which is incredibly impressive. Uh, some of them rotate seasonally, just like beer on tap, and, uh, and it's a great place to go. They've got a wonderful happy hour. And uh, if you want to continue with more seafood excursions, just head to over just a couple hundred feet to the left, the brick red colored Pier 57, uh, home to the Fisherman's, the Crab Pot, which was once featured on the Travel Channel's Man vs. Food a few years back. Inside the pier, there's also the uh, waterfront's only carousel and arcade, and probably, most notably, this gigantic Ferris wheel. This Ferris wheel is 175 feet tall, making it the tallest. For those of you who are from Texas, you're probably very confused because there's another Ferris wheel that's taller than this. Uh, but it doesn't operate seasonally, or uh, it operates seasonally, but not all year long like this one. Thankfully, since we live in Seattle, we have a lot of drizzle. All of these, uh, oh, we have some very nice people waving to us from, uh, from those capsules. You might notice all those capsules are glassed and glassed in and encased, which uh, thankfully for us means that we can keep it open even during the nine to ten rainy months throughout the year that we get. It was just opened uh, last 4th of July, actually, so it's pretty relatively new to us in our, uh, in our waterfront. We love it. It's called the Seattle Great Wheel. You might notice, though, that there's a big blank spot just past the Ferris wheel and just before the Seattle Aquarium at Pier 59 ahead of us. Now, this is uh, it's what we call the old Schwabaker Wharf. Schwabaker was a big guy during the early sort of real estate guys in, in Seattle. And this was actually in 1897 where the steamship Portland docked. And uh, what's kind of impressive about that is that it had a rumored ton of gold in its holds, which kicked off the search for more gold up in the Yukon, starting the Yukon gold rush. If you know much about that, though, you know that not many people actually found a whole lot of gold. Uh, really, the only people who made a profit off of the gold rush were the ones who outfitted prospectors headed north. And that's how Bartels, uh, John Nordstrom, and Eddie Bauer all got their start. Today, the Seattle Aquarium is, uh, is just north of that in this evergreen colored pier on our right. They are fantastic. They have a nationally recognized otter breeding program. Otters are adorable. I would highly endorse a visit here, uh, even if you haven't added it to your itinerary. It is a blast to go visit. They have a, a really awesome program where you can actually touch. They have a touch tape. So it's sort of like a petting zoo, but the aquatic version. But you can get a hug from a sea urchin. And I can say from personal experience, different kinds of sea urchins give you better hugs than others. So if you go there, you'll actually find out what I'm talking about. It is so much fun to do so. 
you might possibly be uh, be eligible for a little bit of a discount as well. Uh, depending on how you purchased your Harbor Tour Pass, just check out our visitor center on Pier 56 for more information. They might be able to help you out. Of course, past this elevated freeway at 3 o'clock on our right, you'll see a peach-colored building with a seafoam green roof. And, uh, and if you look up above it, you'll see public markets spelled backwards. This is the Pike Place Market. And uh, the amazing thing about it is that it's been here with the exact same philosophy that it was open with since 1907. Uh, the amazing thing about that is because back in 1907, uh, price fixing as it is today was not illegal. Uh, middlemen would procure produce and fish uh, basically en masse. They would get together every week since they bought out all of the product. They could decide how much everything would cost. And that made it pretty terrible for consumers because they could incrementally raise prices and no one could do anything about it. It got so bad, they raised onion prices 10 times within one year uh, that no one could afford onions. It was that bad. So a city councilman decided to buy out this building, invite producers and fishermen to, instead of selling all of their product all at once to middlemen, to take a little bit of a gamble and come and set up a little stand every day and sell their products to the masses. And, uh, and it ended up being better for us. We get to meet the people that grew the carrot that we'll have in tonight's salad or uh, you can always see fish fly and being caught in newspaper. It's uh, it's just a blast. Lends a, a little bit of a of a nod to if if you've ever seen Portlandia, we really do like to know exactly where all of our food comes from. It's a lot like that, and it's and it's just fun to go visit. So you won't just see tourists there; you'll actually see a lot of Seattleites all throughout the market all the time. Now you can see, even if you look up to the left hand side, I'll try to orient most of the tour to the right hand side of the boat. You'll see a lot of different boats moving around. Uh, that ferry that we saw out at dock is actually out underway right now, uh, heading out to what looks like Bainbridge Island. And uh, so hopefully we'll see some more. You can also see several different pleasure boats around us, uh, even one coming out of Bell Harbor Marina on the right. Uh, we have a lot of boats in Seattle, and that's sort of an understatement. 60,000 registered pleasure boats just in King County. Uh, it makes us sort of the, we like to call ourselves the unofficial pleasure boating capital of the world. We've got a lot of boats. And since you have a lot of boats, we have to have a lot of places to store them. And uh, Bell Harbor Marina, immediately on our right past the spring water, is a very popular place to store boats, especially short-term boats. Uh, this is uh, just like short-term parking lot for boats. And the orange rates here are, coincidentally, a lot less expensive than many of our downtown parking rates. So if you have the option to take your boat in versus driving, most people will to take their boat in for a day in order to escape some of our parking rates downstairs. Now the rest of Pier 66 where Bell Harbor Marina is located is also our first ever cruise ship terminal. You can see this very colorful angular structure on the right. This was built in 1996. Unfortunately for us, we didn't really, this was our foray into the cruise ship world. We had no idea really how to get it started. We were under the assumption that if we build it, they will come, just just like Kevin Costner. Um, today, people actually refer to this as the Field of Dreams Terminal because we did build it, but we built it when we didn't have any prearranged contracts with cruise ships, which is generally how you're supposed to start things. You procure a contract, then you build a terminal, and you have departures that happen immediately afterward. We did it the exact opposite. We built the terminal thinking, oh, they'll just magically arrive, which isn't quite how it works. Uh, now, if you're curious as to what these black bobbing cylindrical objects are just along the waterline where it meets the breakwater. Uh, the, the reason those are the size of, of SUVs and small tractors is because the boats that dock here are pretty much in between 700 to 1,000 feet long. Uh, they're floating cities, these cruise ships. Uh, a lot different from the days of old. Uh, they have, uh... and the next pier with the giant red E on the top at 1 o'clock on our right is, is uh, Pier 67, the Hotel Edgewater. Edgewater is one because it was once open. If you take a look at a lot of those windows, some of them are open right now on the balconies. This is sort of something that saved them. In 1962, they were supposed to open to house visitors coming through the World's Fair. And they were supposed to house a lot of those visitors. Fortunately for them, they ran into construction delays, which was not good for opening. So the entire fair had ended, everyone went home. worked out so well for them uh, that within two years, in 1964, the Beatles came and stayed and fished there uh, amongst other masses of people. They stayed up in that corner suite with a curved wall of uh, windows on the top left-hand side. They call it the Beatles Suite today, and if it's unoccupied, if you stop in and poke in your head and ask for a tour, uh, sometimes they are inclined to take you on a, on a little tour of the Beatles Suite, so that's always fun. 
But I loved staying here when I stayed there. Uh, it's also just a short walk away from uh, Pier 69, which is the port of Seattle, this white colored pier with the green windows. Uh, the port oversees all of our port affairs, but also SeaTac International Airport behind us. And these beautiful high-speed catamarans on the right with the Union flag on the side, uh, these go about 32 knots. A knot is just above a mile per hour, 1.13 miles per hour. And uh, this boat, well, wonderful, would uh, go about three times less than that one. So what these guys are built to do is get you as fast as possible up to Victoria, BC. They are actually so fast that within uh, just under three hours, they'll get you right up to Victoria, BC in Canada. And uh, if you've got a passport, at least. And uh, you can take a day trip up to Canada back if you like. They've also got whale tracking services aboard the, uh, the Clipper 3. So it's a great way to go up to the San Juan Islands and, and see some whales if you like. Now you might have noticed all these piers are at very interesting angles, usually around 45 degrees rather than 90 degrees. Now that's mostly because this water gets so deep so quickly, we can't really build our piers out of 90 degrees. We could, but it would get so deep so fast that not very many pilings would be able to reach the sea floor. There would be really tiny short stubs of piers. This pier is the best example of that, and this goes all the way back uh, before the Great Fire in 1889. This pier, Pier 70, is now home to the Grey Mendon Law Firm and a uh, little espresso place in, a, in an Irish bar, but over its long lifetime, it's been home to the Washington State Liquor Control Board, the Coast Guard, and even the 1998 season of the real world. The reason it's been home to so many things is because this was the actual original location of that pier. It was the only one that withstood the Great Fire in 1889. All of what you've just seen is, is very today commercial. Uh, back in Seattle's early days, this was all the the, the, sh uh, the shipping and, and sort of international hub part of Seattle. It was all very industrial. And uh, even trains went right onto those piers, which was great because trains came back up easily at 90 degrees. So that kind of, kind of came in handy for us. Now ending sort of the central showcase waterfront, moving into very park-oriented atmosphere. On our right, you've got Olympic Sculpture Park, open half an hour before sunrise to half an hour after sunset, built in conjunction with the Seattle Art Museum, which is why you can see those beautiful sculptures. I would wholeheartedly endorse a visit. And it's also the closest unobstructed view of the species that you can get. And right now, uh, this is probably one of the only times that I've been ab actually able to say if you want a photo up of the Space Needle, definitely go for it because there's literal blue sky behind it, which I haven't seen in, in probably half of a year. So definitely uh, feel free to, to get up and move around as much as you like. Consider this book your home for the next 45 minutes. Uh, there's a lot of cool photo ops as we move throughout the bay, so keep that in mind. I will actually talk about the Space Needle itself, but I'll